Hello my friends, today it is already half past three and as I've been in the same camp spot not doing much computer stuff I thought I will uh, answer uh, some of your questions today but before that I will go and take a quick run because this landscape is gorgeous and I desperately need to get some moves in so Hold on tight, I will be back and then we get started. Okay. Ah, that was nice. And yes, I left the dogs here with the door open and everything because it was just uh, 15 minutes. And I was literally right here and there's no one here. Okay, so as I'm nice and uh, sweaty now, it is the perfect time to talk about hygiene. As you have seen, I do go to campsites to mostly wash my hair and I do that about once a week, not, of, not more often because I've trained my hair not to get greasy so quickly. Uh, other than that, when I do some exercise or otherwise feel uh, very like sweaty or icky, I do myself a little shower. So for that I have a bottle with uh, this kind of uh, end. Uh, it is actually bought from a, from a pet store. It's meant to wash your dog's uh, feet uh, when you come from hiking or so on, so you can keep it nice and easy in the, in the car. It has a simple thread. So when I feel fancy, I do warm up water and put warm water in here, but it's sort of okay today. So I'm just gonna fill that up with water. I have my bowl here with a little bit of soap and I do like a, a quick shower like this. <laughs> if there are a lot of people around I can make like a privacy curtain for myself from uh, this tarp so I just tie the ends uh, to the to the ceiling railing or to the door or just you know like a makeshift uh, little shelter right now there's nobody here so I'm just gonna do it really quickly without it it is not the most you know pleasant shower but uh, it will it will it will do the job you see I'm gonna show you quickly so yes, <laughs> yeah, it's not the, like the most pleasant, you know, I, ca I will not soak myself in warm water, but I don't, don't want to waste so much water anyway. So a quick shower is uh, very good for me and also like a good mental exercise to do cold things. Okay, but I'm going to turn you off. I'm going to give myself a shower and then we will meet again. Make room girls, make room. Oh. There was a lot of questions about the van, um, yes, there were a lot of questions about the van, uh, but I will do a separate van tour after the vlogmas uh, has ended, when I have more time to do it, like in depth. But a quick recap, I did the insulation and the planning and also helping, but the construction, like the carpenter carpentry side uh, I hired a carpenter who helped me do all of that and also electrical stuff I had a workshop to that like extra battery and the lights and the heat the diesel heater and so on so I was there whenever I could I was helping out with the carpentry side you know holding nails and <laughs> mostly running to the construction shop to uh, buy supplies but uh, yes uh, is there anything specific that I would like to add to this um, uh, van? At the moment, no. This sink uh, cupboard is the perfect addition that I added just before I came here, drove to Portugal. It would be nice to have a lot of things in the van, but I have everything like that I need and that makes my life a little bit like easier. So I will better hold any additional money in my uh, car repair fund because I know there will be repairs there have been repairs and there will be repairs so I will uh, keep that as my top priority uh, the next question is also connected to the van a little bit like what are my uh, future plans with the van at the moment I have like a general plan to spend the winter here in the south uh, driving along the coast of Portugal and also Spain and then what happens I don't know because the 
COVID situation is like changing all the time. Maybe I can't access the countries that I would like to on my way back to Estonia. And like in general, I would love to go to Sweden, north of Sweden in the springtime because that's the most perfect winter weather there. It's still cold. Oh, that's like just, I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's still cold, but the sun is shining uh, more and there's still snow. I would love to do some kind of uh, winter hiking ski trip there with the dogs. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Let me show you. What are you doing? You want to have pets? Yes, you do. You are so cute. She's so cute. Linka has... Link... Linka wants to have more personal space, so she's here. A big topic, safety. So how do I keep myself safe as a solo travel traveler, especially solo female traveler? And I have to say, since moving into my car and traveling around in the van, I feel super safe because I always have my home with me. And whenever I feel unsafe, I can go jump into the car and drive away, lock the doors and so on. But I have to say, I haven't felt that that way. It was, I think it was one parking lot that I felt a little bit sketchy uh, during the night time because it was dark it was like on the border of uh, uh, Czech Republic and Poland and Poland like I'm so sorry but Poland doesn't have like the best uh, uh, reputation in safety wise there was also going on this big uh, border crisis between uh, Poland and Belarusia um, but uh, other than that I have been feeling really safe having two dogs with me adds a lot because although they are not aggressive dogs they are big dogs and they look a little bit intimidating especially Linka when she looks with her like anxious eyes but others don't know it's anxious eyes others may think it's like like uh, protective eyes but other than that like traveling in general i have my google location on and two people know where i am all the time i also have always a place where to charge my phone so i'm never out of battery because i have everything in my van so all in all i i am already in very safe countries i don't go anywhere where it's not safe. For example, I was uh, thinking of going to Morocco because it's so close, but I read that it's not maybe the safest or smartest to go there as a female alone. So I'm not going there. I'm staying where it's super safe, like and Europe in general is super safe. I am more concerned about my car breaking down in uh, remote locations rather than me being safe you know i know i will be safe anyway and if not like like a crazy shit can happen anytime anywhere in public places or in like wilderness places but yeah mostly like the van not starting and breaking down or getting stuck in somewhere where i have to pay a lot of money to get out i think this is like a rambly answer that i feel safe i don't think it's a especially big deal to feel safe in Europe as a female traveler as well and to, having two dogs, two big dogs will help. Just the appearance of them will help to keep the sketchy people away. Okay, and then we had some uh, personal questions. First of all, how do you pronounce my name? It is Mayu, not Maui. Do not confuse my name with the island in Hawaii, the Maui. My name is Mayu. Yeah. <laughs> Mayo, Mayo. <laughs> okay, that is settled. Uh, also, you wanted to know what I do for work on the computer. I mostly do data entry. Uh, I also do some consultation on health and safety, like in companies, like workplace uh, health and safety. Um, and yeah, that is that. It's uh, it's not a full time job. It's a half half time job. I do get by. It's not a lot. Uh, that's why my budget is very restricted and you will not see see me doing like crazy stuff that uh, demands a lot of uh, money when you travel. But I'm not complaining. Uh, it makes you uh, more creative, I think. Okay, it is windy here. Let's get back to the van. I went for a quick run with the dogs and now the sun has set 
and the, I am in this beautiful location where I have overview over the Nazareth town and it looks so pretty, it looks so Christmassy, like these little twinkling lights on the hillside. Gorgeous! Okay, and let's do some final questions, shall we? Okay, two quick ones. Uh, have I had any issues with language in Portugal or other places? Well, it is so and so. In reality, I barely need to contact like services in other languages. Like, because if I go to the store, I just pick whatever I need and then leave. Uh, as I'm on a tight budget, I don't go to a lot of places. And if I see people, we usually speak in English. I do know some Spanish. So in emergencies or like in situations where I really need to co communicate, either it's a body language or like I understand a little bit Portuguese Portuguese because I understand Spanish and you know it's just it's not a big problem you can manage and always you have Google Translate that can help you out in dire situations that so I don't see any big problems with the language what software do I use for editing I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Fun fact, it's 2019 version because my computer is too old and it doesn't take the newer versions. So it is sometimes slow because of the old issue, but uh, this is what I use. This is what I've always used, so I'm used to it. Also attached to that editing question was how is it possible for me to edit my videos every day so well? First of all, thank you so much that you think they're well edited. Second of all, it is a challenge. Yeah, I just try to do it as quickly as possible. I'm not as fast at it as I would wish. Um, it still takes me about two, two and a half hours to edit one episode, depending on the day. Uh, I think the trick is to know what you're filming during the daytime, so you have less material to choose from when you're editing. This is something that I'm still learning, but I'm getting better at it. I, I'm proud of myself. Okay, uh, there's one question that... Uh, uh, connects a little bit about my future plans. So it's about uh, uh, any further through hiking plans. Well, I would love to do something, but because I have two dogs now that limit my through hiking abilities considerably, but they are sled dogs and they are winter dogs. So as I mentioned before, I would love to do some kind of winter hiking, like longer winter hiking, ski trips, uh, some sort of through hike on skis in winter time and I also like winter hiking so that would be an extra challenge for me let's see if it actually happens but this is something that I'm thinking about and the last question uh, it uh, is about making friends or being social while traveling alone so it, I will read it if I travel somewhere alone, I'm very shy and have to make myself engage with people, activities and so on. Just wondering if this is something that affects you. Interesting that with the dogs, people are more likely to talk to you, but also a little more difficult to arrange activities, etc. That's exactly how it is. So for me, I also have to make an effort to engage or talk or like make, make new friends on the road, but I'm working on it actively. You might think I'm really outgoing from the videos maybe, but actually I'm not. I'm more introverted person and uh, talking to new people is a challenge for me. But I found that group activities is the best way to go. Uh, for example, my group surf lesson, I got so many friends out of it or like acquaintances. They're not friends yet, acquaintances. With the dogs, it is exactly how it was said here. People are like, it's a nice icebreaker to have dogs, but also because I have two of them, they're big. I can't take them anywhere. Like I can't just go to a cafeteria to meet up with people or just to meet people in general i can't go to restaurants or museums and like the main activity that I, that i can do with them is go for a walk and that also is sometimes challenging because they don't walk nice on a leash so that's exactly true i haven't figured this out yet it is still a challenge for me so if you want to leave me suggestions in the comments what to do with new friends new acquaintances while still having two dogs that are hard to walk and also, you know, like uh, tricky to take to public 
places like restaurants, cafeterias, I would love to know. I would love to have like a, like some things in my back pocket to whip up uh, when I want to do something with new people. So yes, I think I will end the video here. It was fun to do these questions with you. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, whenever, you can leave them below. I am always reading them and answer answering them in the comments. Or if I have like any reoccurring questions, I can do these uh, Q&As uh, more. Now it is... Um, 6.30, I will make some dinner for me. If you ask what I will be eating today, uh, leftover pasta with my grandma's uh, lecho. Uh, I'm very excited about that. Adding a little cheese on top, frying a little onions like in the pan. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, yes, this is all for today. Thank you for the questions and uh, good night to you and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.